We move on to the light welterweights. And uh, this will be a very interesting match. And one of the big stars, Steve, the Russian who we see warming up backstage is uh, Maxim Dadashev. Lightweight, 23 years of age, 3-1. But he's up against uh, Yasniel Toledo, the prodigy they call him, back home in Cuba. And of course, uh, the Olympic bronze medalist from London 2012. Well, I love to watch Yasne Toledo. He really, really can uh, fight. And I, I love his style, Nick. He likes, he likes to get involved. He, you know, he's a box fighter of a great caliber. Um, despite his experience. So Toledo, he has been beaten, he was beaten in week five, he's got a 4-1 record Steve, he is ranked number one, but as you said, a very exciting South for 24 years of age, starting to reach his peak physical fitness and his peak of his uh, growth and uh, strength and electrifying performance against uh, Carlos Adamez in the uh, Cuban quarter-final against the United States of America. And if he boxes anything like that, tonight we're in for a real treat. Well, to be honest with you, Nick, um, if Toledo was unbeaten, I wouldn't complain. I thought, you know, that, that bow could have gone either way. And a lot of people thought that uh, Toledo was very, very unlucky not to have got the nod. But uh, that's the only stain on the uh, otherwise perfect 4-1 record of Yasnia Toledo. He's ranked number one, of course, with the World Series of Boxing. 24 years of age, and again, another southpaw who could do it both ways round. He does love to switch. He, he's a bit of a showman, and that's what makes this such an exciting boxer. He really does like to turn it on for the crowd. Now, let's take a look at his uh, opponent. Rising star from the Russian squad, Maxim uh, Dadashev, just 23 years of age. He's got a 3-1 WSB record. 1-1 uh, this season, but this is his second year, so the Russians are hoping it's the experience that Dadashev brings to this bout that could give them a chance of going 2-1 up. Well, I'm not too sure about that, Nick, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, Dadashev appears to have deteriorated. Um, 2008 was a good, a good year for him. He got to the, uh, the final of the, uh, the World Championship in 2008, and then, of course, all he could do in 2010 was get a bronze in the Nationals. Um, and thereafter, got to the quarterfinals um, in 2011. You know, it's been a downhill spiral for Dadashev. It's gone up a weight, Steve, and I think that that's what's the difference from that uh, impressive world championship form moving up a weight. It uh, becomes a very different game. And as we go up into the light welters, these guys can pack a bunch. You know it yourself, Steve. Well, he will have an experience tonight like never before up against a really, really talented boxer, a box fighter from Cuba in Yasnia Toledo. Cracker. And if, if Dadoshev, by the way, Nick, uh, is anything like what we anticipate, I nice to get stuck in a punch up. We are in for a real treat. Make a note of this young lad's name. You're going to be seeing a lot of Yasnia Toledo. He is one of the bright shining stars of the World Series of Boxing. But Maxim Dadishev, he's a tough cookie. A little bit like Nikitov in the Nikitin, I should say, in the last bout. He'll come forward, he'll cover up, he'll box that classic Russian style. But for me, Steve, it's the footwork once again of Toledo. He looks like a dancer more than a, a boxer sometimes. His speed around the ring really is uh, so exciting to watch. He's such a dynamic fighter. And let's hope he's brought all those skills tonight. Well, Nick, I, I must say I prefer Toledo when he actually gets his feet flat on the floor and has a right old good old tear up. Um, and and you know, I can see this going that way. Well, you're absolutely right. Here is uh, our Algerian referee, Yakub. 
A lady? Good, luck. Good to see. Finland, Denmark, Turkey, England and France, the five judges of which the computer will randomly select three in our ten-point must-score system for the World Series of Boxing. The first of five rounds, Dadishav goes up against Toledo. We're all square, one bout each to Russia and uh, Cuba. This has got to be the most important part of the night so far and let's see if Toledo can work his magic. Our expert in the commentary box, Steve Holdsworth, has predicted a tear up here, and it looks like his prediction is coming true. Well, you never know, Nick, um, but I did what I, what I did predict at the beginning was, of course, that uh, Cuba would win the first, they did, they'd lose the second, they did, and they'd win the third. Of course, we don't know that yet, this is the first round. But uh, I tell you what, I love to watch Toledo. He's a really, really good value boxer. You know, he boxes, he fights, he moves well, he's a good thinker. Very fast hands as well. I love the way he peppers that lead jab hand just to set himself up for the big shot. And quite often, of course, these Cubans take a look at their opponent in the opening round. They don't seem to do a great deal. Um, you know, they, they, they either coast it or just, just look anyway. And then, of course, they, they put a plan of action into place from the second round onwards. There's nothing to worry about. They... Uh, Pretty confident about their chins. Just slightly taller, I'd say. Toledo certainly looks to have a longer reach. Boxing at a slightly better range than the Russian in the early exchanges. It's a good point that you make, Steve. He's almost mapping out his plan of attack for rounds two to five. Yes, he takes his boxing very seriously, Nick, and uh, I don't think tonight's any exception. And once again, decent jabs there. And he, the one thing he does do that I do like, and it completely flummers his opponents, he moves off to one side, generally to his right, and you're left punching air. Mm, I love that. Many of you will remember Toledo from the uh, last Olympic Games in London, where, as we mentioned earlier, he took the bronze, beaten by the boxer from the Ukraine, Lomachenko, who went on to take the gold. Unbelievable quality of boxing at the 2012 Summer Olympic Games. But I have to say, Steve, we're talking an awful lot about Toledo. As in the previous bout, the Russian has got off to a pretty good start. You're not a bad start at all here for Dardashev. He's ranked number 13 with the World Series of Boxing. He's only 23 years of age, actually a year younger than his opponent here. You know, he's done quite a lot, of course, in the amateur ranks, um, you know, in his national championships, etc. But I just wonder, with three wins and one defeat, which is, you know, not dissimilar to Toledo's record in this game. Um, you know, whether he's got it, what, it, what it takes to beat Toledo, who's a very, very decent, tried and tested boxer. Well, as we've seen in the previous bouts, he's showing that he's got strength, powerful. Big punches from the Russian. Close round. Yeah, I agree, Nick, but I, I you know, I personally feel that Toledo did enough, um, you know, up, for the first two thirds of the round, if you get my drift. No, I would agree there. But I think for me, it's how Toledo unleashes and steps up a gear in the next round. Now he's uh, sized up his opponent. Yes, he takes his boxing very seriously. And you know, he's good to watch. He's got flair to go with ability, like most of the. Uh, the Cuban boxers, and uh, as you see there, um, Toledo has actually been declared the winner, as we anticipated. Of the first round, that is. Mm -hmm. Well, so many of the boxers on the World Series of Boxing relishing the opportunity to box against Cuba and some of their talented Cuban boxers. It's good for everybody. And of course, all of these boxers hold on to their Olympic eligibility, their World Championship eligibility, as well as uh, boxing professionally. And that's got to be one of the plus points for the world's premier boxing league. What I'd like to see now is Toledo step it up again. Yeah, he, he doesn't tend to, Nick. You know, he, you know he, he'll do this all night. And that's the good thing about Toledo. He's got a good pace. Um, but he'll keep it up for rounds one to five right the way through. Um, 
you know, there are occasions when he'll spurt, but, you know, they're, un they're unusual. You know, he normally just sticks to one game plan. And Steve, having watched the opening round, what do we need to see more of from the Russian? <laughs> That's a very good question, Nick. I think defence wouldn't, wouldn't go amiss. Um, he's taking a lot of shots that he possibly shouldn't. Um, and he's not really smart either. When he, when he goes on the attack, he's walking into shots. Counterpunch from Toledo. Timing, absolute precision. But having said that, Nick, I don't know how he'd avoid that. You know, if you go forward against this man, you're going to get caught. End of. Um, you know, I would know how, how to stop him doing it. In that, well, there is a way. He doesn't have to take a forward step. But if he never took a forward step, there wouldn't be a fight. Absolutely. He could, of course, try to develop some sort of counter-punching ability. But, you know, he's not made that way. You know, he is what he is. And he's going to go marching forward. It is the Russian style. That uh, forward-moving, hard-hitting approach that so many of the Russian boxers trained so hard to perfect. And, of course, the Cubans give the impression that they're just dancing around them. But uh, he's had some good punches in the first two minutes of this uh, second round. And uh, Maxim uh, Darashev keeping up his work rate. He's making life difficult here, I think, for Toledo. Having said that, Toledo is one of these fighters, uh, Nick, um, that wants to beat you at your game, if you get my drift. It's like when Sugar and Leonard tried to beat Duran the first time they fought. He tried to outfight Duran, which of course was a massive mistake. Um, but Toledo thrives on saying, OK, you want it toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I'll give you toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You want to outbox me, I'll outbox you. He's that kind of guy. Massive repertoire, so many skills. And uh, he draws upon them. These are a good closing... Uh, ..seconds for the Cuban. Just over ten left on the clock in round two. And I personally think this is a Dada Chef round. It might be the last one he wins. There's the bell. And uh, another close round. I've just got Toledo ahead. But I've been uh, wrong on more than one occasion, not only this evening, but uh, in many WSB matches. But uh, good, strong finish that second round for me from the Cuban fighter. Yeah, great uh, arena this, by the way, the Moscow Arena, built for the 1980 Olympic Games. And then, by the way, Nick, you know, a replay here from round two. Nice body shot there from Toledo, cracker. And again, saw the nice space, and in he went. And uh, it is a second round. Unanimously to uh, Toledo of Cuba. Now, his confidence is growing. And I've got a feeling here that Toledo will now really start to put the pressure on Darashev. As we saw in the slow-mo replays after that second round, he's putting in some great work to the body as well as to the head. The uppercut for me is starting to work very nicely as well. And as you've pointed out, Steve, he's starting to get very confident out there. Yes, he's that kind of guy, isn't he? Uh, you know, you, you could... You, know, you, you could say anything you like uh, to Toledo, and he will argue with you. He's that kind of man, um, you know. And in his boxing as well, you know, he loves it. You know, the, the, the bigger the challenge, the higher he rises. I like that screw shot that he does with the jab as well, and that's caught the Russian out on two or three occasions. He really does have a lot of skills. All of the punches, he'll use them all throughout the bout. He doesn't just stick to the. Same old, same old combinations that are so effective for so many. And have you noticed, Nick, how when they're not working, they're defending, and they're defending well. Oh, yes, two good shots there from Toledo. Credit where it's due, the Russian still on the attack, still coming forwards. But uh, paying a price for that, Nick, Nick, as well. He's getting caught, isn't he? Yeah. And for every one that uh, Maxim Dardashev is getting off, 
Toledo is getting three or four in return. Point scoring rounds, remember. When you're hitting the gloves, as Steve pointed out earlier on this evening, you're not putting points on the board. You need to hit that target. And for me, Dadashev needs to start coming downstairs a little more on Toledo because he covers up so well and blocks so many of those punches with absolute precision and skill. And a lot of people, Nick, ask me how, how you score a bout. Well, let me tell you, very, very briefly, it's all very, very subjective. You know, if you think that A has hit B more than B hit A on the, on the target area with the knuckle part of the glove and sufficient force, then A should win the round. I mean, that, that's the theory. It doesn't always happen that way, of course, um, but that's what you should be looking for. And, of course, boxers in the modern area are so good at feinting, so good at keeping their range, making these opponent miss, which is what Toledo has been doing so well in this uh, third round. But it's that style that the Russians have, Steve. They keep coming forwards, they keep letting the judges know that they're the aggressor. They're very, very determined individuals, aren't they? Up against talented and, you know, talented boxers with flair from Cuba. And, you know, don't forget, of course, right at the very beginning of the, uh, of the boxing revolution, really, in, in, in Russia, Cuba and Russia follow the same ethos, as it indeed did all of the satellite countries in the USSR. But uh, since then, of course, Cuba have added flair and all those other little bits and pieces that make them so good to watch. Yes, it's, uh, so good to watch is the word. Maxim uh, Darashev, ranked 13 this season, up against Toledo, ranked one. Let's take a look at some of the replays here, Steve. Talk us through the technical skills, but most importantly, what Darashev has got to do to try and stay in this bout because it's starting to look all about Toledo. Well, there's a term I used, um, a few moments ago, Nick, you know, you are what you are. Uh, and if you're good enough um, to compete at this level against the man with the abilities uh, that Toledo has got, and he's just won that round as well, um, fine, you know, not a problem. But if you're not, you, you're, you are in big trouble. And you know, with the exception of landing a big shot, and we've seen Toledo take big shots in the past, I can't see, uh, I simply can't see Dada Chef winning this. Well. Here's an opportunity for Cuba to go back into the lead. This, of course, the uh, third match of five, the third bout of five, I should say, in this semi-final match. And can I just remind you, Nick, that we did say this would go down to the wire, score-wise. We thought it would be 2-2 uh, two, two all with one to play, i.e. the heavyweights, and, and that would be the decider. It's going to be a very exciting finale to tonight, but for now, Toledo, in the penultimate round, starts to show his skills once again. Still fast, very quick, and uh, now starts to show us his power, his physical fitness, as well as his boxing skills. Because for me, Steve, he looks as sharp now in the fourth as he did in the first. He's always like that, Nick. And, you know, he does things that I don't like. He can be a bit rough and he can be a bit tough. And he can be a bit dirty on the occasion. But, you know, I think only if he's done to, if you get my drift. But he's making a pretty good fist of this one, Dardo Chef. And once again, a mockery really made of the WSB rankings. Dada Chef ranked 13, Toledo ranked number one. You know, there's not a great deal between them. That's why these are the two teams that are in the semi-finals of uh, season four here. But uh, only one can go through to the final. And we've already talked about uh, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan on the other side of uh, the draw. Two very good teams and the defending champions, of course. And. Uh, Yes, I think either either of those sides could cause an awful lot of trouble for the winners of this match, and that, you know whether it be Russia or Cuba. But I did say right at the very beginning, from day one, my finalists were Cuba versus Kazakhstan, <laughs> and, you know, and they're still in the, they're still in with the shout. Especially with the Cubans boxing as well as they are here in the Moscow Arena. This is the home match, of course, for the boxers in the white shorts, and they need to take advantage of the home crowd. But Toledo, he's caught in the corner here. He'll need to use some skills to get out of there. Turns his boxer, turns his opponent. By pushing the head down, says the referee. And Toledo could be late, making life an awful lot easier for himself, but uh, as you can see, Nick, as I said before, he's the kind of guy that says, you want to box, I'll box you. You want to fight, I'll fight you. And he's maybe not up to the uh, the aggression and the level here 
the Dara Chef is executed. Good shot from uh, Toledo. Accuracy to the end, but again, Dara Chef has just kept the consistency and combinations. Not all of them on the target. Oh, there's a lovely shot there, right on the bell. Two fantastic shots in the closing 10 seconds of the fourth round for Toledo. And that could give him that round as well. Well, I've got a dead level now, 38 points apiece, Nick. And I've got to say, there is an old saying, you fight a boxer and you box a fighter. And, and you know, when, when Toledo says, OK, you want it this way, I'll give it to you, I think that's a mistake. You know, I think if, um, if Dardashev wants to fight, box him. If he wants to box, fight him, you know? Absolutely. You've said it already, Steve. Um, Toledo possibly lost that one bout in his WSB career today through having a bit of a scrap rather than uh, using these uh, superfluous boxing skills that we're seeing in slow motion here in the uh, fourth round. But look at some of these punches towards the end of this fourth round. Yes, I don't think he realises how good he could be. But could, of course, being the operative word. Well, uh, Toledo takes that round. One of the judges giving it to Dardashev, but uh, the majority with uh, Toledo. Dardashev needs to knock him out now. It's as simple as that if Russia were to take this one. And as we've been saying throughout this bout, Toledo would love him to try. Yes, indeed. And don't forget, of course, they will have said in the, uh, the Russian changing room to Dardashev, listen, you've got to win this bout. This is one they anticipate winning. If we take it from them, we've got a chance. Well, now we're seeing the retreating body here of Toledo, hands high, going backwards, possibly realises he doesn't need to do an awful lot to take the win here. But, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would uh, contest that, Nick. You know, I think you need to stay on top of him again. Yeah, maybe he's trying to keep out the way because he knows that you can see the Russian trying to throw the big right hand over the top, not connecting, and that's why uh, Toledo just uh, boxing a little more at a longer range keeping out of trouble, in and then stepping back out to avoid the counter-punch from uh, Dardashev, who's got nothing to lose now by trying to land one of those big ones. You're absolutely right. I mean, nothing to lose. That's a good place to be, really, isn't it, Nick? Yeah. He's shown Toledo that he can take his biggest shots. He's got no problem there. But can he cause a shock and steal this from the Cuban in the fifth and final round? Normally, of course, uh, we all have a, a great deal to lose, but like Nick has so rightly said, you know, Maxim Dardasha, you know, he, he, he really does need something of a miracle here to overcome Toledo, you know, and Nick, it's worth trying anything when in that state, isn't it? Absolutely. I think that they have uh, had their technique drilled into them. He only knows one style, one way to go. It's a successful style. Don't get me wrong, with Russia top of the medal table at the recent European Championships, right up in the top countries in the world at the recent World Championships. And uh, at just 23 years of age, Maxim Dardashev is still in the early part of his career. But it's the flair, it's that style, and it's that confidence from Toledo. And that confidence has been clearly demonstrated not only to us here, but to the judges as well. And he's uh, got a good advantage. Let's see if Dardashev can just get a big one away. Well, I've got to say, Nick, there's never been much between these two lads. Um, you, know, or, you know, I think uh, I've got no doubt that uh, Toledo's going to win the bout. But, you know, it's, it, it's been a very, very hotly contested. And he's quite an awkward campaign as well, Dardashev, isn't he? You know, he's in your face. He's always working. He, he is that. And um, he's put some good punches down as well. And uh, Toledo, who continues to keep those fast hands flowing to right to the end, just 10 seconds left now on the clock. And uh, Dardashev has done uh, Russia proud, but Toledo clearly the better of the two. And uh, another win for Cuba by my scorecard here in the commentary box, taking the guests 2-1 ahead. Cuba going back into the lead. Well, we did say, Nick, didn't we, right at the very beginning, that uh, we fancied uh, Cuba to win the first, the third, and the fifth. Uh, so far, they've won the first, lost the second, as we anticipated. They could well have won the third here. In fact, I think they have. Um, I don't think they're going to win the next one, but the last one, which is the massive heavyweight contest, 
And, uh, you know, it'll all come down to that, Nick. Well, let's... Uh... As you quite rightly say, Steve, the middleweights will be up next. But let's just have another look uh, at uh, Toledo here, Steve, in the slow-mo replays of the fifth round. Again, some very fast punches and a couple of nice right hands that almost stopped Dadashev in his tracks. Yes, I think uh, the referee did a good job. Third судья, Филиппиад Сорокет, Джордж Ту, 15-47. И третий судья, Сорок Восемь, Сорок Семь, Джордж Ри, 48-47. Единогласное решение судьи. Победа одержал Эмбио Уинер, Байдю Дэнос Дезижер. Фрэмбо Блу Коннор! So Cuba do indeed uh, get the verdict, and I scored it, Nick, 48-47, but one judge had it five rounds to nil in favour of Toledo. One had him uh, winning four rounds to one, and I thought he won it three rounds to two. I think that was a much fairer result as to one of the judges. I think Dardashev can take a lot from that, Steve. He can uh, put in a much better performance than perhaps many of the opinion leaders had thought before tonight's competition. But for Toledo, well, it's uh, another win for him and a win in a high-pressure situation. To take a win like this in Russia, in a semi-final of such a massive tournament as the World Series of Boxing, goes to show the quality and class that uh, Yasnia Toledo is developing, and developing at a rapid rate. Yes, and don't forget, of course, everybody, that uh, the task for, for Russia, the next time these two meet in Cuba, is magnified tenfold. Um, you know, and, and the, it's gone exactly the way we anticipated, Nick. The Russians have uh, lost the second, sorry, my apologies, they've lost the first and the third, but they've won the second with two to play. Strength, power and commitment from the Russian, but outclassed by it, the Cuban, Yasnir Toledo. Puts Cuba back into top position. They've come here seeking revenge for their loss to Russia in week eight of the tournament. And this could be the crunch match of the night. There's a confirmation of the scores from the three judges as we move on to the middleweights. Toledo and Vieta, league winning for Cuba, Nikitin for Russia.